And so we say good morning to those of us who are here in the center. Welcome to the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living. We're delighted that you have joined us uh, here in person, as well as those who are joining us as part of our Zoom family that are joining us on Facebook and also viewing on our YouTube channel. And we like to have an interactive experience. So we have a task for those of you who are joining us via Facebook and via our YouTube channel. We would like for you to like the page, to subscribe, to share it, and to make a comment, four things. And in the comment section, let us know where it is that you're viewing from. And I wanna say thank you to the new subscribers that we have picked up on our YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page. It helps us to spread this message of love, this message of oneness throughout the entire planet. We're continuing with our September theme, Love Out Loud. And our topic today is love on a spectrum, love that has no limitations. Low flying jets. I frequently share with you that I am the best comedy show that there is. <laughs> so this week, as I was looking uh, through the uh, listing of holidays for the month of September, I came across one which was September 5th, actually, which was last Tuesday. September 5th was Be Late for Something Day. <laughs> well, I had the exact opposite experience. Um, I had scheduled an appointment with my doctor uh, as a follow-up to my little episode that I had on my birthday, uh, just to do make a check and to do a check and make sure everything is okay. Well, my doctor's in Danville in the Bay Area and some friends who live in Brentwood had invited me to uh, a Labor Day gathering that they were having together. So I called the doctor's office on Tuesday the 29th. Tuesday is the day that I want you to remember. So I called the doctor's office on Tuesday to schedule an appointment. And they said, well, can you come tomorrow? I go, nope, have commitments that I can't get out of tomorrow. So they said, okay, come next week. So I'm thinking next week, Tuesday. And so I'm making a connection. Oh, I'm gonna be with my friends on the fourth. I see the doctor on the fifth. I can just stay overnight rather than driving back to Monterey and then driving back up. So I did that show up at the doctor's office on the 5th, and they said, oh no, tomorrow, tomorrow. And I go, wait a minute, you said last week. And then they reminded me that uh, the doctor has two offices, one in Oakland and one in Danville. And he's in the Danville office on Monday and Wednesday. I showed up on Tuesday. <laughs> so I just had to laugh at myself. So I come back home, uh, you know, drive back to Monterey and then drive back up on Tuesday and um, everything is in absolute optimum working order. So I'm grateful for that. Tomorrow we pause to remember uh, the events of September the 11th, 2000 and, uh, 2001. And this has become known as the National Day of Service and Remembrance of Day. And re National Day of Service and Remembrance Day. This is the events where ordinary Americans performed extraordinary acts of heroism. Firefighters, police officers, and other first responders rushed into buildings that were burning in an attempt to save the lives of others. Construction workers, colleagues, strangers, all tended to the wounded. Passengers and crew members on airplanes gave their lives to thwart another attack. And so we remember these acts of heroism as well as remembering those who died. And so tomorrow, take some time to be in reflection and gratitude for the freedoms that we experience, even though sometimes they may feel restricted, the freedoms that we experience as Americans and to Offer service if that feels right for you. So today, 
We're looking at love on a spectrum. And I added a tagline, love has no limitations. Love has no limitations because each person expresses love, experiences love, and we do it in our own unique way. And if you don't take away anything else this morning, I would like for you to just remember that love has no limitations, that it operates on a spectrum, and that we each experience and express love in our own unique way. Thich Nhat Hanh writes in How to Love, true love is made of four elements, loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. And we know the work of Thich Nhat Hut was based in loving kindness. And that is also one of the principles of our teachings of science of mind, is to love one another as we love ourselves. And the key is to love ourselves first so that we can love others. As we talked about last week, I can love myself so much and I can love you so much that you can start loving me. Ernest Holmes writes this in the Science of Mind textbook. Spirit is all life, truth, love, being, cause, and effect. It is the only power in the universe that knows itself. And last week, I also shared with you that the more we show up authentically as we are, the more we break down those external systems of control that have broken us in so many different places. Gender roles as we know them have become obsolete or significantly changed. This evolving change invites us to embrace a new learning curve where authenticity becomes a cultural value and we learn to embrace who we are. And this is the whole message of the theme for this month and it is a message for our daily living experience to embrace who we are. As we embrace who we are, we take care of our own selves. I'm reminded of a song that I remember uh, from a traditional uh, religious community that I was a part of. And the title was, Sweep Around Your Own Front Door Before You Sweep Around Mine. This is how we love ourselves. This is how we practice authenticity by cleaning up what is around our own front door. And if we spend 90% of our time cleaning up what's around our own front door and 10% of the time looking for what may be lurking in the, in, the, in, the, in the background in the bushes or whatever that is coming to put more litter in front of our front door, we don't have time to go and mess around with anybody else. Spirit expresses all cultural expressions, genders, sexual orientations, and experiences, because there is not a spot where God is not. In the teachings of science of mind, we believe that God is love and that love is all there is. Therefore, our authentic expression must be love in action. We are the outpouring of spirit created the image and likeness of source that makes no mistakes. Everything is spiritual, everything is love. Turning again to our Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes writes this, the essence of love while elusive pervades everything, fires the heart, stimulates the emotions, renews the soul, and proclaims the spirit. This is on page 478. Only love knows love, and love only and love only knows love. Words cannot express its depths or meaning. The universal sense alone bears witness to the divine fact: God is love, and love is God. God is love, and God is love. The first thing we are to remember is that we are perfect just as we are. You know, we, we, say that, we say that a lot in this teaching and in this philosophy that we are perfect just as we are and that the universe is perfect just as it is. 
And while our ideas of perfection may fit into a narrow box or a narrow window, if we look at the total spectrum of things, everything that we're experiencing is perfect for us in this moment. Because if we were not experiencing it, then we wouldn't have a base to grow from, a base to really test this teaching and find out if it really works. Gender identities, sexual orientations, and ethnic heritage that we are born with are the divine imprints that we are gifted from our source. Each one of us was purposely brought to this planet and born into the communities where we were raised at the right time. And I know for some of us that may be a hard pill to swallow, but if we look back on the experiences, we can minimize the pain. We may not always totally be able to remove the pain, but as we look back, with where we know now, what, what we experience from the teachings of science of mind, spiritual principles, spiritual truths, we can look back and we can see that there was some good in that, that supported us, that led us to the place where we are now. Who we are authentically is who we are meant to be. So we might as well celebrate who we are. And there's no reason to feel shame around our identities. Remember, God makes no mistakes. Love exists on a spectrum. It includes the light, the dark, the comfort, and the discomfort. Growth occurs in a place of darkness. And I've asked our tech team if they would to um, put on the screen for us our, our teaching symbol the science of mind teaching symbol. Is that up? Okay, I'll turn and face it. Um, will the camera pick me up if I go over closer to here? Maybe not, maybe not, yeah. Let's see. Okay, yeah, and then you that. Ah, thank you. Thank you. So we see that the teaching symbol is a circle, uh, and the circle represents infinity. There is nothing outside of God, nothing outside of spirit. And then you'll see that there are three parts to the symbol. Uh, the top part is identified as conscious of cause. Um, and then the way we teach it in our youth church and to the teens is uh, see the soil of the plant. So the seed is that in consciousness which we plant into the fertile soil, which is the soul, that subconscious medium. This is the darkness. This is where the growth occurs. This is where those thoughts, those ideas of who we are, those ideas of who we are not, those ideas of what should be, and those ideas of what are, are planted in the subconscious medium of the soul into the darkness. And then what we see as the effect of the form or the body is what outcome is in our lives. And so one way we say this is that if you want to know how your, how your life is working, go back and look at your thoughts. And so as we grow and as we experience the change that is being called forward now in our life experiences, we recognize that the darkness is where we may be uncomfortable. However, this is the place where the greatest growth occurs. Out of the darkness, our greatest growth occurs. Discomfort is a complement to growth. And so some examples, lifting weights is uncomfortable. Uh, for those of us who lift weights, you know, it's, it's, it's managing that right weight for where we are at that moment in time, and then graduating to the next level. Uh, this practice creates a healthier body. Sweets, one of my favorites. 
Oils and fats taste better than raw kale. Raw kale, if not properly massaged, <laughs> can be a hard taste. No, I no, let me reframe that. It can be an acquired taste. <laughs> However, we know that leafy greens are one of the healthiest foods to support our bodies. Growing pains come with physical and emotional discomfort. Love has no limitations and expresses in every gender and in every color. I'm gonna take a risk here. So I'm letting you know in, in advance. One of the things that we're cautioned not to talk about from the pulpit is sex and politics. Well, I'm gonna talk about sex. If it were not for sex, we wouldn't be here. Let's face it. <laughs> so consenting adults, operative word, consenting adults, when offered a framework for an open discussion of their personal preferences will help shift the world towards acceptance of all forms of healthy, loving relationships. So it is not to impose what our belief or what our practice may be on the world. It's not inviting someone else to engage in a practice that is not comfortable for them or they would not consent to. The idea is to create that space, to create that container where practices are welcomed between consenting adults. A couple of examples. People of interracial, interracial relationships around the world have had to fight to love who they want and to be accepted in that loving relationship. There are people right here in our own United States, along with other countries around the world, that deny equal rights and service to same gender loving individuals. Romantic relationships most often portrayed as between two people. The concept of cheating on a romantic partner could disappear, could possibly disappear if palimony, which is the practice of engaging in multiple romantic and sometimes sexual relationships with the consent, it's all about consent of the people involved. If this were normalized, just the possibility may exist that cheating would no longer be a factor. And again, consenting adults. I'm not talking about the sneak around, creep around experiences that are going on. Um, now I'm not advocating, clearly make this clear. I'm not advocating that we throw out the traditional values that we are accustomed to and work in our individual lives. What I'm offering is that we be open to embracing forms of healthy, loving relationships between consenting adults that have actually been around and are now more out in the open. Franciscan priest, Father Richard Rohr, um, who is the rather prolific writer on spirituality says this about love without limits. Like any true mirror, the gaze of God receives us exactly as we are without judgment or distortion, subtraction or addition. Such perfect receiving is what transforms us. It's like, when we look in the mirror, we're seeing a reflection. We're seeing a reflection that represents beauty. We're seeing a reflection that represents joy. We're seeing a reflection that represents wholeness. We're seeing a reflection that represents, I am my authentic expression of source, of God, of spirit. All our love experiences support our growth. All of life is relationship and the, and the entirety of our experiences connect us with the spirit within. And so I leave this closing thought with you. And it's actually by Mary Jane Yates from Diversity Matters. 
Imagine a world where sunsets were all the same color, or forests only had one kind of plant, or food had only one flavor. When we are tuned into our senses of the natural world, it is easy to recognize the importance of diversity. So why is it that we seem to have such difficulty in embracing the diversity within our own species? We hear another language and tune it out as being irrelevant to our own conversations. We see a different lifestyle and we deem it wrong or immoral. We hear an opposing viewpoint and judge it as uninformed or radical. Yet, according to ecologists, a world without diversity in both biology and human culture will not survive. Diversity matters. Loving out loud matters. Loving ourselves as we are matters. Loving and embracing and accepting one another as they are matters. We're not here to change anyone except ourselves. And for those of us who are parents or those of us who have nieces and nephews, try and experiment with the child, getting them to change. Especially if you have teenagers, that's where the rubber hits the road. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Let us now affirm together our affirmation for the week. I embrace the spectrum of love that expresses itself as me. Let us say that again. I embrace the spectrum of love that expresses itself as me. Let us now pray together. I invite us to turn within and just allow yourselves for a moment to connect with the breath, recognizing the breath of God is breathing each one of us. And so it is in the breath of God that I speak what I know to be the truth, that there is only one life. And often I refer to that as the allness of God. And if we think about that, the allness of God encompasses everything that there is. So there's only one thing happening here, and that is God expressing. And how good it is to know that I am an expression of this divine source. I am an expression of God that is living, moving, and having its very experience as my life. And as I affirm this as my truth, I affirm it as a truth for all, for all people, for all beings, for all that there is. A representation, a unique, unrepeatable expression of the divine. And so it's with joy this morning that I speak my word, blessing communities where people are gathering in the name and nature of love. The name and nature of the spirit of inclusion and acceptance, the name and nature of the allness of God, recognizing that as we travel this path, as we journey along this adventure called life, that there may be points where our paths will intersect. And I speak my word declaring that those intersections are loving, that they are peaceful, that they're approached and embraced with ease and grace and love. And as we continue on this journey of life, I am knowing that the experiences of life bring both joy and sadness into this human experience that we're living. And so it is out of our sadness that we turn within, go back to that place of the darkness. And this is where we hang out and allow the spirit to do what it does to bring about the healing of our body, our mind, and our spirit. And we emerge from that dark place 
with the newness of life, with the likeness of being, recognizing that I am the place where God shows up. And so as we continue to journey along this life, I speak my word of blessing for those who are seeking right livelihood, right and perfect housing, choices, multiple choices, multiple choices available for all that is required to live an abundant, a joyful, a prosperous, a fruitful, a productive life. However, that shows up in the mind of each individual. Recognizing this, uh, that, recognizing this idea of perfection is that which moves through each experience on this daily journey. I speak my word this morning for those who are experiencing grief in the form of the transition of a loved one. No matter whether it's a recent transition or it's a memory of a transition, knowing that the love continues each time we remember and think about or call out the name of that individual. It is that memory that lives on within us that allows us again to go into that darkness and to be there in a time of reflection, in a time of sadness, in a time of sorrow, and to emerge into the light of the new beginning, knowing that life continues and that life is good. And for this and so much more, I am eternally grateful. Releasing this word back into that law, which always says yes, I just allow it to be so. And I invite you to affirm this with me as we say together, and so it is. And it is now time for us to participate in the experience of sharing our abundance. We have a statement of abundance, and I would like for us to say that together now. I recognize the presence of God within as a source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could desire in life. With gratitude and thanksgiving, now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And each week, it is my joy to stand before you and to say thank you. Thank you from the depths of my heart for the ways that you continue to support the spiritual community, not only with your talent and your time, also with your treasure. And we have on our screen the ways that you can support us. Uh, you may mail in your donations to our center at 400 West Franklin Street, Monterey 93940. Uh, you may text to give, and that number's on the screen. And you may also donate through our website, www.montereycsl.org. And we invite you to go to the website. Uh, if you're not a subscriber to the newsletter, click on the subscribe button so that you can be informed of the activities that are taking place here at the center. And also, uh, we are looking at making some modifications, some improvements, some enhancements to our website. So we would like your input uh, as to what you would like to see, what, what is missing, or what would you like more of in terms of information. Remember, the website is a place that people go to to get information about our center. So this is our opportunity to broadcast out into the community who we are as the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living, the place where God is. God not only shows up, but the place where God is. For those of us, for those of you who are here in the, in the center this morning, we have a donation box on um, the hospitality table, and we invite you to take advantage of that. Um, Today, we are celebrating a birthday. We showed up late for something. 
<laughs> we're celebrating one of our tech volunteers, Chelsea Irish. Her birthday was actually August 30th, but we're celebrating today. So happy birthday to Chelsea. <laughs> And we have other September birthdays that are coming up and I will share those with us next week. And um, that is it for our morning. And so we want to say thank you to our Facebook and our YouTube families that, um, and we invite you to return next week as we continue our September theme, Loving Out Loud. And the message is, love thy neighbor. And remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you and blessings to our YouTube and Facebook audience.